NIST 800-53A, revision 5. This uh, recently came out. Uh, what is NIST 800-53 Ref 5? NIST 800-53A is a document that's put up by NIST, uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, that basically provides uh, procedures and methods for conducting security control assessments. So this is going to be a guide for anyone, especially security control assessors, uh, while they conduct security control assessments. So it's going control by control, telling them exactly what to do. If they need to um, test, interview, examine, it's going to break down step by step what they need to look for um, while they assess security controls. NIST has finally released SP-853A, Revision 5. So this was released uh, in January 2022. Um, it used to be in draft mode, and uh, you can see that the last one uh, was based on Revision 4 and was uh, released December 18th, 2014. Okay, so there is a new document. And if you go to this um, website, the CSRC, so csrc.nist.gov forward slash publications forward slash detail forward slash SB, forward slash 800-53A, um, and that's capital A, forward slash REV hyphen 5, forward slash final. And I'll put the link in the uh, description. So here's where you click on to download a local copy. Okay. So here we go. Assessing security and privacy controls in information systems and organizations. NIST 800-53A, Revision 5. Um, some of the changes I know off the top is that the privacy and supply chain controls in the newly added 800-53 uh, Rev 5 were included in this publication. So we'll scroll down to uh, table of contents, course purpose, target audience, and then here is um, the section that talks about the security and privacy assessment procedures, and of course, it lists, lists the uh, security controls. So you can see down here, it says uh, supply chain risk management. So we scroll down to um, this page, which uh, shows the assessment procedure for control, and it's saying that control is further granularized um, from SP 800-53, uh, which means that they've broken up each um, paragraph into test steps, where you could see um, that this section addresses a part of the control, uh, and we got. 17A2, 17A3, 17B. Um, so these are parts of the control, and they just want to make sure that there's enough rigor and that no one misses any piece of the uh, control language uh, during the assessment.
in here, they're talking about um, adding privacy or accounting for privacy uh, controls. So the CM4, they've now kind of added privacy um, impacts in there. And something that I noticed was different is uh, the addition of a section um, that calls out the organization defined parameter. Uh, remember in the previous version it will have um, organization defined blah 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 so organization defined time period organization defined uh, uh, parameter. So here they're putting this in a block and they have like a naming convention. So if we scroll up, it's saying that the ODP, organization defined parameters, are listed first and separately from the determination statements. And here is the naming convention, the ODP numbering convention is XX, where XX is the two character control family. So um, in this case, CM configuration management. And it will have a dash. And I believe this is the control number. So CM-04. CM-04 underscore uh, organization defined parameter. So that simply means um, that NIST is a guideline and it can't dictate to an agency what uh, that defined parameter is. So, um, for example, if the control was talking about doing a review of audit logs, NIST will say in the control language, organization defined uh, uh, period, so or organization defined duration. So the organization, it's left to the organization or agency to come up with that duration or frequency. So if they're doing uh, audit log reviews, they could say we do audit log reviews weekly or monthly um, or biweekly. So that's acceptable. But in the previous um, NIST publication, it would say organization defined frequency. So here they're calling it out in a box, which is a different organization or um, arrangement. And another thing I noticed is that there is a huge push for um, to incorporate privacy. Like I said, um, here is a, a diagram or illustration that shows uh, the overview of process to conduct effective security and privacy control assessments. So it's saying you prepare for security and privacy control assessments, develop security and privacy assessment plan, whereas this in the past was just called prepare for security control assessments. The word privacy was not included develop security and privacy assessment plan. It used to just be called a SAP, uh, security assessment plan. Now they've incorporated privacy, conduct security and privacy control assessment, analyze assessment re uh, report re results, so the SAR. All right, so that's it for today's um, lesson. If you found anything new in the new uh, NIST 800-53A, 
um, let us know and put something down in the comment section. Again, this was in draft uh, until recently. And um, it's now available uh, and in full effect. So if you notice anything new um, in this release of NIST 800-53A revision five, uh, please post in the comments and let's uh, share that knowledge. All right, thank you. Hey, if you're interested in any of my cybersecurity videos, here is one I would recommend for you. It's the Information System Security Officer Training. This course comes with tons of videos, uh, a CAP, which is the Certified Authorization Professional Bootcamp, comes with quizzes, comes with a certificate of completion, resume template, um, ebook, monthly live Q&A sessions, the ability to ask questions as well and get a response back in uh, 48 hours. Also has interview prep and job prep. So this is a power packed course. For more information, visit www.cyberfirstacademy.com. Thanks. Don't forget to subscribe and like. We're also on IG at Cyber First Solutions. Thank you.